An entire community is in mourning today after 20 people were killed in a limousine accident in upstate New York. And now we're learning that that limo should never have been on the road. The devastating crash happened Saturday afternoon in Schoharie County. The NTSB says this was the deadliest transportation accident in the U.S. since 2009. According to authorities, the limo failed to stop at an intersection, crashing into an SUV. The NTSB is on the scene investigating the cause. 18 people inside the limo, including the driver and two pedestrians, were killed. Now the governor of New York is revealing new details about the crash. The updates we have thus far are number one, the driver of the vehicle, the quote unquote limousine, did not have the appropriate driver's license to be operating that vehicle. Second, that vehicle was inspected by the New York State Department of Transportation last month and failed inspection and was not supposed to be on the road. Tony DeCopel has more from the scene. A serene fall day in upstate New York became the backdrop for a nightmare Saturday afternoon when a massive limousine packed with young people violently crashed. I heard this loud bang. I saw um, a lot of people up here at the Apple Barrel, out in the parking lot, and then I heard screaming. The 18 people in the limo, including the driver, were killed. Two people outside the vehicle also died. This is one of the biggest losses of life, loss of lives that we've seen uh, in a long, long time. Police say the 2001 Ford Excursion limo was traveling southwest down a hill on State Route 30 in Schoharie. It blew a stop sign at an intersection and plowed into a parking lot outside the Apple Barrel Country Store. The limo struck and killed two pedestrians and slammed into an unoccupied Toyota Highlander before it careened down a slope and came to a stop in a muddy ditch in the woods. Authorities combed through the wreckage Sunday, removing tires and personal items from the scene. You can't wrap your head around it. You just can't. Barbara Douglas says her four nieces were killed in the crash. She said they were celebrating the youngest sister, Amy Steenberg's birthday. They were wonderful girls. They'd do anything for you, and they were very close to each other, and they loved their family. Amy Steenberg's husband, Axel, was also killed in the crash. They married in June. In Amy's last public Facebook post, she wrote, Axel Steenberg, I love you more than words can say. Thank you for being so kind and loving. Axel's brother, Rich Steenberg, also died. It hasn't really uh, sunk in yet. Seems like a really bad dream, I guess. Eric Steenberg is Axel and Rich's younger brother, and Andrea Arokis is Rich's sister-in-law. I can't really imagine how you go forward. I don't know how people move forward from it. There's so many people involved. There's so many people that have been affected, children involved that are going to grow up without their parents and without their father. Tony DeCopel joins us now from the scene. Tony, it's just so heartbreaking listening to the family members that you spoke with. What else have they been telling you? Uh, well, Meg, before we get into the family members, I want to let you know uh, about a developing situation here. The NTSB, which has been on the scene since late Saturday, early Sunday, has cleared the area. This will be perhaps the last uh, uh, conversation we have from this location because the entire uh, media lineup has been removed from the area. The NTSB is telling us they plan to use this space to conduct an aerial accident reconstruction. So that gives us another piece of the puzzle in terms of what their plan is as they seek to reconstruct this accident. They're going to be inspecting the vehicle, interviewing witnesses, and now with this newly cleared space, they're going to be conducting aerial surveillance. We can already see them walking around with their vests on and, and different pieces of, of equipment. Now, what does that mean for the families? Well, the families obviously are looking for answers. Uh, this was a group of, uh, of friends and family who went out knowing they were going to be drinking and deciding to do something that they saw as the safest possible option, which was to rent a car, rent a driver, go place to place, have a good time, and don't worry about who's behind the wheel. Well, as you heard with uh, Governor Cuomo there, apparently they, they, they might have worried more because that, that vehicle was not supposed to be on the road and that driver did not have the appropriate license. Complicating the situation further and also raising questions in the minds of the family members is this intersection. According to the owner of the, uh, the Apple Barrel Country Store, we're in the parking lot of that store, 
This intersection has been a problem for a long time. It was actually reconstructed about a decade ago. And even in the aftermath of that reconstruction, a reconstruction where the goal was increased safety, there have been, according to the owner, at least three tractor trailers that have failed to make the stop at that T intersection. They've come through to more or less our location. And overall, in an email to the Associated Press, the owner of that store said there have been more accidents than she can count. So at this juncture, there are two tracks that the families are going down. On the one hand, there is grieving. On the other hand, there is questioning. Why was this car on the road? Who was behind the wheel? And what do we know about this intersection? How could it have been in better condition for cars on the road? So Thanks. many questions to answer. Tony DeCopel, thank you.